as many positives as you can find, I still think an overriding uh, theme from this one is they're just not that juggernaut team that they were last year. Last year, they played the Cowboys with Micah Parsons and just blew them out. And this game was trending the same direction. This game could have easily been 40 to 13 or something like that, 41 to 13, but that's not who this team is. At least not yet. The identity of this the identity of this team is they let teams back into the game. And it's going to come down to the end. It's going to come down to the last few possessions when it shouldn't. And that's I think maybe Greenlaw and Christian McCaffrey change all that around. But uh I think the the Niners need to stop waiting for Christian to come back. It's 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 in it's it's in you guys. It's 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 not you can't ask him to be the savior. You guys outscored the Cowboys 21 nothing in the third quarter. It's within you. You just got to tap into it more consistently. Well, the question is why? I mean, you're right. There's no question. The second half, the negative in this game was once again the Niners in the second half on the defensive side can't seal the deal they can't close they can't finish um so to me i look at it as they've got some young dbs so there's a little bit of inconsistency on the back end they've got campbell instead of Greenlaw on that second level so there's a little bit more too much room in the middle though campbell i thought played his best game in this game um but to me the number one reason the niners can't finish is they don't have a pass rush to finish so, the, you know, they can put a little heat and they can come at you and they can try hard, but they don't have that overwhelming pass rush. And then they don't have good enough depth to spot Floyd in the moments they need him. So he's kind of worn out in the moments they need him. Um, so, like, to me, it's, if they could add, I mean, if you're if you're looking at the rumors tied to the Niners, there's a lot of, to- a lot of rumors tied to them connected to a defensive end or a defensive tackle. So I, you know, I know a lot of people have speculated Gary wide Smith. receiver, but it sounds like they're going D line. It sounds like they're trying to add to their D line, and I think they just look like they get into Prescott into an obvious second half passing situation when you know they're not going to run. They don't have much a run game anyway, but now it's late in the second half. They have no, they're they're two touchdowns down. They're coming with the pass, and yet the Niners can't. They can't close the space on the back end. They can't. They can't put any heat on the quarterback with any real consistency. So I think they need another rusher or two, another D lineman or two. That's a big part. I think they do need another rusher. They can get Zadarius Smith, but we've talked about before why the Niners don't close well. And you've pointed out it's because they pass when they should run. It's an overarching pattern. And again, in this game, second and three, three and a half minutes left, they pass, should be a run, uh, sack, almost a fumble. So to me, why does Kyle do it? I really have always felt that as effective as the outside zone blocking scheme is in terms of yards per carry and efficiency, it is not a power running scheme. You're not pushing people off the ball. You're not pounding the rock. You're stretching the defense. There's a difference. And to me, when you're like trying to close out a game and everyone knows you got to run the ball, that's when like a power running game comes in handy because you're trying to assert your will and wear a team down and outside zone doesn't do that i mean you get you get defenses running side to side but you're not like leaning on them like that and i wonder if that's i don't know i mean it's a football theory kind of a thing but when it's when it's time for winning time four minute offense is that when you want outside zone or is that when you want like power is that when you want like offensive linemen who can actually recreate the line of scrimmage on their side i don't know what do you think well, I mean, you you have, I mean, we saw what, remember when the Niners were shorthanded and they lost to M- Marcus Mariota and the Falcons in Atlanta a couple of years ago? And it was like Atlanta didn't have anything except for two mediocre backs, a really good offensive line, and Mariota on the read option, you know, hold, he'd hold that mesh point and then make the Niners kind of guess. I mean, the Niners have a mobile quarterback who's got great quickness. They got an assortment of different runners. They're a better run blocking line than a pass blocking line. Um, You know, they should be able to run you, you know, run, run teams it away, you know, kind of put them away by you utilizing the run. But Shanahan does get, he gets, I want to say, I'd love to label him as he's this or he's that. 
but he's really enigmatic is what he is. Because, I mean, Grant, go back to the first possession of the game. The Niners get to the 35-yard line. It's third and nine. Their kicker is Anders Carlson without a big leg. So you figure on third and nine from the 35, they're probably going to drop back to pass and let Purdy, you know, attack a little bit and be aggressive. Instead, they ran J.P. Mason on the most conservative halfback dive, setting it up for Anders Carlson to kick a 50-yard field goal. Now, he made it. And they got a three, they got a three nothing lead early, but I thought that was kind of dubious. So it's like, okay, so in a way, I'm saying Shanahan's way too conservative because at that point, that's the first drive of the game. And I realize, you know, may, Cowboys can't stop the run. Uh, so maybe he felt like he could get nine yards on the run, but a third and nine on a on a on a really kind of humdrum halfback dive type play. I mean, how often does that go for nine? It was almost as if he was setting it up for a field goal from Carlson, but it was a 50 yard field goal. And the guy's like four of eight career beyond 50. So I, I didn't get that. I don't get, sometimes I don't get Shanahan's conservative nature. And then there's other times where it's like, Hey, second half run the freaking ball and he'll, he'll get, he gets pass happy. And I think there's examples where he's lost a lot of big games, whether it be in Atlanta or here, by getting too pass happy. So I don't know. I sometimes I just feel like he's a genius offensive guy whose feel kind of comes and goes. I, again, I want to come back. It's not just that he's like, it's the zone blocking scheme. I think he gets offensive linemen who are good at the zone blocking scheme. And I think when you're trying to close the game out with your running game, remember what Harbaugh's offensive line was? Joe Staley, Mike Upati, uh, Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis and Alex Boone, like those guys were huge yeah. and they would win the line of scrimmage. The Niners, they have all these playmakers. They have all these touchdown guys, but, and they can outflank you to the side. Like they can reach and run. They can get you running sideline to sideline, but they're, they don't have the offensive line. That's going to like consistently win the line of scrimmage against good D lines when you know, they got to run the ball. And that right. puts Kyle in a position where he's got to trick you a little bit, which is not ideal in that type of a game situation. Yeah, no, I mean, when you get in the low red zone, you're either beating people with quickness, power, or ingenuity, right? You're either going to fool them, or you're going to outquick them to a spot, or you're going to uproot them out of the hole and just bulldoze them. Well, the Niners don't have the ability to bulldoze. Without Christian, I, I don't know that, the, you know, one thing I think I feel like we're seeing with Mason is that Mason has got a unique skill set. He's big, and he's strong, and he can string together moves. But he's not a, he doesn't move the pile. He's not a great short yardage runner. He kind of dances at the line. There's some negative you know, movement and wasted movement at the line. He's not a great short yardage goal line runner, despite the fact that he's incredibly skilled. He's got great hands now. Um, you know what I mean? It's like it's weird. He's a big back. And then there's Garendo, who doesn't really have feel or vision, but he does hit it up there hard. I mean, the one thing about Garendo, man, he will hit that hole and power it up in there. So I'm kind of wondering maybe they should. I mean, Garendo's feel and vision is not great. So it's a little hit. He's a little hit and miss. But I mean, either they got to go with Garendo, they got to go with Mason, they got to figure out, they got to get McCaffrey healthy, or they got to get another back because you can't be a team that can't score inside the five because you can't punch it in. You have to have a back that can punch it in inside the five. And if they don't feel like the guys they have can do it, um, then maybe they need to go get somebody else who can. Because that that that's like one of, even when the Niners were, you know, going back to the original Niners in eighty one, um, they had Ricky Patton and Len Vill Elliott and some smaller backs. They acquired Johnny Davis, like a power two hundred and forty pound back, because Walsh was like, Hey man, we get inside the five, we gotta power it in. Um and you just you that's got to be a part of your game or you're you're at a huge competitive disadvantage. And if we're being like honest here, the Niners are very thin at running back. Christian McCaffrey, yeah. it's the Niners are, you know, they're being cautious. They haven't really expressed a lot of optimism. They're being cautiously hopeful with Christian McCaffrey, which sounds like I don't even know how to interpret that. Uh, Jordan Mason is definitely injured. He's now react. He's now injured his shoulder twice. And Isaac Garendo is the next running back who's in danger of being overused. So, yeah, they can't bring in another running back soon enough. Nothing against Patrick Taylor Jr., but I think they could 
maybe find someone better. Yeah. I mean, it might be time for Keyshawn Vaughn. It might be time to look at the waiver wire. It might be time to look at the trade market, but I don't think usually you, you can wanna... find a running back. Yeah. They're, they're out there and you don't have to pay a lot to get them. Um, so those were the takeaways from the game. I mean, do you have any others that, that, st- that stand out? I mean, I, 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 my, my only other, you know, thing was that I just feel like there's something about the 49ers this year where they just like in this game, they're better than Dallas. They can run it on Dallas. They can stop Dallas's run and Dallas can't stop their run. And in a game like that, you should blow that team out every single time. But in this particular matchup, Dallas looked a little quicker, a little livelier. They were a little fresher coming out of the bye week. They were maybe a little bit more motivated. I don't know. But it was like the Niners could not like put them away. It felt like they were putting them away. They were on the doorstep to put them away, but they couldn't put them away. And eventually it became kind of close. I, I, I bet the Niners uh, money line in that game because I was like, you know what? I do think they're going to win the game, but I don't want to mess around with any points because I fear the back door here. Sure enough, here came the back door in the fourth quarter. Um, and I don't know exactly what numbers people got it at, but some people I'm sure got hosed. And it's hard to put it like on just the offense or just the defense. It just seems like this is sort of what the Niners do. They let teams hang around. They struggle to f- close out the game. And it's weird because it's not something they really struggled with last year. Like they had a lot of blowouts where they had teams, you know, with no hope midway through the second or third quarter. And that's just not this team. I think it's fair to realize that they may be good. They're very talented, but they're just not that good anymore, at least right, not right now. 